This is floral foam for making floral arrangements. This is foam board insulation for insulating your home. And this is just regular old styrofoam for packaging. I wanted to see if any of these foams had a use in diorama building, since you can buy expensive foams to carve into and make things out of. I just wanted to see if regular items that you can get at any big box store or home improvement store would serve as a alternative that you could actually use. So I did a little bit of an experiment and I used as many as I could and some had some definite pros and some had some cons. Here I just wanted to cut out the basic shape of the diorama. I'm using the XPS insulation foam for things like bridges and cobblestone roads. The styrofoam is going to be relegated to just groundwork since the texture is a little weird and we're going to have to find something to cover up the sides with anyway. This diagram I'm building is inspired by VP Studios uh, Martyr in Action diorama in the Verlinden Productions Building Military Dioramas Volume 4. You can see that uh, in that diorama. There's a cobblestone road, uh, a bridge over a little brook, and a telephone pole, and some soldiers. Caught my eye when I first started getting into the hobby, and I've always wanted to kind of recreate that. Um, in that diorama, they sell a resin cobblestone road, and so I wanted to recreate that with foam. And you can see I just scored everything here, and I'm going over it with the edge of my ruler to give it some definition. And then this is just a sculpting tool. You could use a toothpick, a piece of sprue, anything to just give some definition there. And it looks good, but I wanted to give it a stone texture, so we're just going to press a stone into it. You can see this foam takes that really well. I found with this foam insulation, one side, the outer side of the foam board, had this kind of film on it, and that looked the most like uh, bricks and cobblestones. Um, this side in here, where I cut it, it definitely has a little less of that look. It's almost a little uh, fuzzier. So uh, you'll see how we fix that later on, but it's something to note. You want to probably use the outer sides of the foam. Now we're getting into the floral foam, and you can see here, this is very fuzzy. Th this foam is meant to hold water, um, and so it's very porous. It would probably be best for maybe like lava rock if you were doing a volcanic diorama, um, but it just wasn't working for the stones. I use it and we're gonna fix it, but for these other stones, I just had some plaster castings, so I use that. Uh, I wanted to make my own telephone pole, so I just took a wooden dowel, scored it up, and gave it some wooden texture really happy with how that came out and I printed off the insulators um, from uh, Night Shift's uh, Patreon page so if you're interested in those check out his Patreon page and you can print your own uh, insulators as well as a bunch of other nifty uh, 3d prints and then it was time to cover the styrofoam because it has this weird, I don't know, uh, in little uh, pellet texture, I guess. You can see all these little nooks and crannies in it. And we were going to cover it anyway, so it's absolutely fine for this purpose. This is just my standard mix of celluclay and a little bit of paint, just so even though we're going to paint it, 
you can't see through it, acts as a good base coat. And just get it in kind of all those nooks and crannies. Then it's time to add some texture to it. These are just rocks that I found in my backyard and some sand from my kid's sandbox. They won't miss that. And then just kind of going over everything where you'd think there'd be some exposed ground. And it's, it's okay to go a little overboard on this. Um, you never know exactly what you're going to, you know, keep bare earth. So here I used Floracraft's Smooth Finish to cover up those pellets and make it a little smoother. Now I'm making my own tufts of grass. This worked okay. Um, if I was going to do it again, I probably just would have done this straight on the diorama, but I wanted to make little tufts with my homemade static grass applicator. And first I wanted to prime everything. I was going to leave the soil texture or soil color brown, but then I decided to just do everything in black. Now I wanted to start kind of highlighting the individual cobblestones to give this a lot of depth and a real realistic look. So did that. And this is what we ran into with that floral foam and the edges even of the insulation board. I, I wanted to fill that with just Mod Podge just to give it a more stone look instead of being so fuzzy. Um, that took, I would say, four coats of Mod Podge, matte Mod Podge, um, before it looked kind of how I wanted it to. This was just going back through with the brush. It was a little easier to control than doing it with the airbrush. So I just went through and I pulled out all different types of grays. And there are those tufts we made. And they look good. They, if you look really closely though, they don't stick to the ground uh, as flush as I'd like to. They kind of hover over those areas. So I had to refill that in and make sure it was completely covered with the static grass. And this is just Mod Podge and I'm working in small sections. And once you've got that covered and cleaned up, I just teased it a little bit so it wouldn't look so much like felt carpet. This I just picked up, uh, not a sponsor, um, but it's this kind of interesting mat. Uh, this is what I probably should have used instead of the tufts that I made. But you can kind of see now they're pretty similar. So if you don't want to buy a product like that, you can kind of make your own. You don't even need a static grass applicator. You can just um, kind of use your hand and, and put it in little blobs of paint. Or glue and now we're just doing the same application as we did to the road but this is with red obviously so each brick gets a slightly different color um, I usually try and do like three or four of these bricks in one color and you can see that it, it really gives it a nice kind of weathered look and a little bit more realistic than it if it was just red and that was just I think three colors that I mixed together. It doesn't really matter what you use. A little dry brushing on the plaster stones. And of course, the telephone pole needs to be painted a brown. Now, this is a mixture of uh, grout and some plaster. And I just brushed that into all the cracks in between uh, the cobbles and the bricks um, it, it worked better on the cobbles um, I probably should have been a little bit more heavy-handed though with both this and the bricks because it didn't fill as much as I kind of wanted it to you can't really tell especially here um, but it, it gives it a nice weathered look and kind of blends it into the terrain so that's really what you're kind of going for there and I just hit it with alcohol and then a little bit of uh, watered down Mod Podge. And then all the texture we created with the sand gets a little bit of a wash. And then we pulled out 
individual stones. You don't have to do every single one of them, but um, that really helps with the texture. And then I wanted to give it a little bit of foliage here. So made a shrub or two with some sea foam trees. Just dipped in yet another foam. I think that's four different types of foam we're up to now. And I just did this a couple of times to fill it in. You can do it as many times as you'd like. If you want it to be a sparse tree or a really full shrub or bush, that, that's, I was happy with that. And then I just, I painted them uh, to kind of unify the color, tone it down a little bit since the diorama is a little darker. I didn't want it to be such a bright pop of color. And then down by where the water's going to be, I thought some moss and lichen would be growing. So we started with that, and then that gets an oil wash as well, just to tone down that color. And then just a matter of putting everything together. Last step is going to be the water. You want to do this last so you don't get any static grass or anything in there. And once that's dry, that's it. That's probably where we're going to leave it for this week. Uh, there's going to be a little bit more to come on this diorama. And uh, I hope you like it. If you did, uh, please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel. And uh, we'll see you next time.